welcome back to Larks for a Needle. My name is Jess and today we're going to be talking about your basic sewing needs. First we're going to look at rulers. I use these OmniGrid ones. I have three sizes, 6x6, 4x14, and 6x24. Having multiple sizes really helps with different projects. And with them being clear, you can be sure that your fabric is super straight. Now to go with these rulers, you'll need a rotary cutter. These make quick work of cutting multiple layers of fabric. Here are the three that I have. This first one is an ergonomic 45mm by Ulfa. I like the feel of this one the best and the safety that when I set it down the blade is closed. This next one is another Ulfa 45mm. It has a push release of the blade that must be held down while cutting. This last one is a Fiskars 45mm. It was the first one that I bought. The blade stays out until you press the button on the side. I definitely like the ergonomic one the best. And you can lock the blade in, which is really nice when traveling. So let's talk scissors. I like having at least three close by. A black handled, a blue handled, and little tiny silver ones. So these blue handled ones are my paper scissors. They only cut paper. And it's especially great for when cutting patterns. These next ones are my fabric only scissors. These ones only cut fabric. They do not cut any paper. If you cut paper with them, the blades will dull very quickly. And these little embroidery scissors are really nice for cutting thread tails. And it also has a needle threader attached to the handle. The so irons are a must for any sewing room. This little one is a Rowenta travel iron. It has a small plate and it's also really light. This one is a Black & Decker. It's a heavier iron and really helps with getting through multiple layers of fabric. But I definitely like my little travel iron the best. So a pin cushion is a really great accessory for any sewing room. And when you keep it small, you can easily fit it into a little dish for underneath your sewing machine. So with pins, the longer pins are really great for holding multiple layers of fabric together. These little shorter ones are really great for keeping your quilt blocks separated. I also like to keep a few safety pins because you never know when you're going to need a safety pin. I also have my hand sewing needles stuck in here too. These ones are long doll making needles and they're really great for quite a few different hand sewing projects. The seam ripper. If you're starting out sewing, or I've been sewing for years, this little tool will have many choice words thrown at it. You'll know what I mean when you need to use it. The bodkin. If you're going to be doing a lot of purse handles or small items, it's really great. You put it into the sleeve and push the stopper all the way down, and it's super tight on the fabric for you to pull. A glue stick might seem weird in the sewing room, but if you're doing paper piecing or applique, it's really great to have. Marking devices. Here are just four of the most common. There are tons of versions out there. First is a regular pencil. It's great to mark the line for quarter square triangles. A air soluble marker. It's also really great for marking lines for quarter square triangles or other cuts. A chalk pencil. It's really nice for clothes making because you can just brush it off fairly easily. A 
and a regular piece of chalk. It's great for marking as well. And as I was designing the spring wall hanging, I designed my blocks right on my cutting board with just a piece of chalk. You can see some of the marks that are still there on the cutting board. Machine needles that are pretty important. I use these Schmidt's Universal needles. There are tons of other kinds out there and I could do a whole video on them. But use what is best for your machine. I'll drop a link in the description for a website to figure out what needle to use and when. My little chopstick. It's really great to push out corners like we did on our little owl pin cushions. Like right here where his beak is. Cutting boards. Again, I use an Omni Grid. This one is an 18 by 24 and it's a nice size for all projects. It is self healing, which means the cuts you make in the board from your rotary cutter will close up. This next one is the Fiskars, and this one is just a little paper cutting board. So now you get to see some of my messy room and also my sewing machines. This one is a Singer Featherweight 2. It retails for about $200 to $300. And this one is my little Bernina Burnett 46. This one is pretty awesome as well, and it retails for around $300. Thread. Of course you're going to need it. This one is an isocord polyester thread. It's really great for doing really cool quilting designs. It's variegated as well. This next one is my favorite. It's an Orifil 100% cotton. It doesn't produce as much lint as a polyester would as it runs through your machine. And this little Guterman is a really great cheap thread that you can pick up at any sewing location. Well, I hope this answers a lot of questions on basic sewing. If you need more clarification on a subject, please comment below and I'll answer on next week's basic sewing video. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos.